today the presentation that um, I'll be speaking on, it is such an incredible topic. Um, the reason I'm saying incredible is because I have all this, you know, when I was growing up, um, I, I, I'm i not somebody who is away from this topic. I have been there in the way that I have had suicidal thoughts when I was young, uh, going through really tough times. So if today you're listening to me, and you're going through a similar situation, uh, don't think you are here. And don't think that you're the only one. So uh, without uh, further ado, I want to sh uh, share, um, if, uh, if, I, if I can, the co-host, that will be amazing. So I can share my screen. So wh while, yes, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna be sharing my screen. Uh, please let me know if you're able to see it. Yes? Yes. Okay. Um, so it's, the topic is hope beyond suicide. And uh, we think, you know, when life comes to that point where it's just, you don't wanna live anymore, um, we come to the point where we just want to end the pain um, and it does happen to every single person that we reach certain points in life like that, where we just want to end it. Um, and so what I want to advocate in behalf of all of us is that there is hope. Don't give up. And I'm going to tell you why and how not to give up and why not to give up, because there is a hope which is beyond beyond your expectation. Um, so when, okay, so what is suicide? Suicide, uh, as defined by CDC, CDC is what governs in the US, the all the uh, decisions about health and wellness, be it mental or whatever. Uh, so the Center for Disease Control and Prevention suggests that CDC is a part of self-directed uh, behavior um, of uh, like, you know, where, there is, where you're trying to be, uh, do violence towards yourself. It is not, it is different from NSSI. NSSI is where you do not want to die. The, viol the harm that is done is not with the intent to end life, but suicide is a fatal, self-directed, potentially, in, not in, potentially, it is injurious to health, uh, and it is the intention to die. So that's the difference between NSSI, which is non-suicidal self-injury, and suicidal self-injury, that's suicide. And that's the topic we're gonna be addressing today. Just in between, I'll just touch upon NSSI um, for a second uh, in between the uh, thing as well. Uh, so suicide is not about wanting to die, but it is about not wanting to live. And sometimes we go through this unbearable pain and we just want to escape from that. And so, uh, because when we feel so trapped, uh, that's where we uh, think. So when we look into the topic, I want you to understand, we do not have to feel ashamed of it. Uh, we don't have to feel um, that, uh, you know, it, it is something that we, it's something that we can't deal with. It is the most, uh, treatable, if I can say, but if medically speaking, um, thing. So don't think that there is no hope beyond it. Sometimes it is a very medical, let me repeat, sometimes it's a very medical or a chemical uh, thing in uh, that we go through. And uh, so it is very important we uh, understand that. We don't use the word commit suicide. When we address suicide, we don't say commit suicide, committing is a crime. So suicide is not a crime. We don't say he was successful in doing suicide. No, that's like glorifying th that person. Media glorifies suicide. And I want you to understand, we don't romanticize, we don't glorify, we don't exaggerate. We ju just say that person died by suicide, just like died by cancer, died by COVID, died by whatever. So now it's very important that you uh, use the right word um, to talk about suicide. Now, uh, I believe Brother Randall is here. Let, uh, is Brother Randall here? 
um, if he is, I would love for him to uh, unmute yourself and share something that you're going through because Brother Randall here is in the middle of two suicidal situations, not himself committing suicide, but somebody who's loved one. So I want Brother Randall to give share his experience within five to seven minutes. Thank you, Tinka. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, good to see everybody and uh, the Lord's blessings on all of you. Uh, this is um, uh, something that uh, uh, Sadapti uh, Tinka had asked me about because she's uh, we're uh, very close and so we share a lot of uh, things that go on in our lives. And uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> a situation occurred in the last, um, I guess, year and a half, uh, two years at the most, where one very recent and one just a little over a year ago, uh, where I lost two uh, loved ones to suicide. Um, that I'm very close to. Uh, I am not uh, an expert on suicide uh, uh, and, and the ways about it and the ways around it, et cetera. Um, or if you're having, uh, you know, uh, uh, issues in your life that you need help, you know, reach out. Uh, but I am here just to kind of give you an idea of what it feels like to be on the, uh, if I can say it this way, receiving end of, of someone who you love dearly and has taken their own lives. Um, so a uh, couple of years, not even a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, my niece, uh, who was a young lady in her early 20s, um, uh, we found out that she had uh, taken her own life. And it was difficult because uh, she was like a daughter to me. Um, growing up, she was with me all the time. And it, the reason that I think Tinka asked me to talk is because even though you think you know somebody so well, and you speak to them all the time and you share your good and your bad with them. Uh, sometimes we truly do not know what is really going on in someone's life. Um, and so if I can, I guess, preface this talk of what I'm saying is, is that we really need to share love and we need to share the Lord with people. Uh, that we know, regardless of how well we think their lives are, because there are so many people that are crying for help, but they're not crying for help. They're not letting anybody know. You see it in Hollywood. You see it uh, in, you know, movie actors and, and professional sports players all the day long, where these people supposedly had the world and um, they, they didn't. They didn't. So, um, when we found out my niece had taken her life, obviously I was so, um, um, it's hard for me to talk about it now, but I was so saddened and uh, my thoughts raced in my head. Um, why, why did she do this? Um, we talked a lot and she was, you know, she was supposedly doing well. She had got, she had, her life was together. Um, she was going to college, had a full-time job. Um, but uh, there was something more in her life that we weren't aware of, even though we talked to her. Um, I thought back about how many times did I share the gospel with her? How many times did we sit down and have Bible studies? Uh, how many times did I talk to the Lord about her? So uh, it's important because there are so many things that are thrown around today um, about uh, whether or not if, you're, if you commit suicide, is, are you, can you be forgiven? Because there's a lot of... Um, theology out there that teaches that you must repent uh, of every sin that you have prior to your last breath or you're not going to heaven and yet the, the scripture teaches something different where if we're truly born again and we we have the holy spirit and we're saved um, that all of our sins are forgiven so uh, suicide is not the unpardonable sin and it was so important because that gave me some relief to know that um, if my niece had made a true profession of faith um, that I will see her uh, in glory one day, in heaven one day. Um, my friend from childhood uh, just recently, uh, three months ago, took his life. And once again, <clears throat> you're in a situation where he's married, four children, uh, engineer, very, very professional, very intelligent, um, has what we would say is life by the horn, right? And... Um, uh, for some reason, uh, even though we talked all the time, text all the time, talked about our family, laughed about life, uh, talked about the Lord, 
Uh, he got saved long before I did. He got saved when he was 20 years old. Um, I got saved many, many years later. He used to talk to me about the Lord even back when I was that age, and I wouldn't listen to him. Uh, thankfully, the Lord found me, and, and I accepted his grace. But um, uh, my friend Billy um, <clears throat> took his life, and it was very ugly. And he lived in Alabama, and I had to fly down there and visit his family. And we had service, and uh, the church he attended every week, mind you. Uh, and he, from all indications that I know, uh, was a born-again believer. Uh, he had the fruit in his life, um, and yet there was something underlying that did not come to the surface through all of the talks and all the times that we had together and his wife and even the preacher of his church who he saw every morning on Sunday school. And when I talked to uh, the pastor of the church, he told me there was one person every Sunday who was the first one. He said every Sunday was the first one to come up to me and say, pastor, that was the greatest message I ever heard. Smile on his face, shaking his hand and looked like he was so happy. But underneath somewhere deep down, he wasn't happy. And I don't know. I, so, so it kills me inside that I wasn't able to, uh, to have, I, I don't know what it is, the perception of knowing what was going on in his life. Um, and yet I know I'm going to see him in heaven because he knew the Lord. So it, it's not always whether we know the Lord or not. It's not always whether uh, we're happy or not. But there's things that uh, I guess Adopti is going to talk about today that if anyone is hearing this message and you're having any thoughts or feelings or you're anxious about something, reach out. Please reach out. Don't 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 go the, the route that my, my niece and my friend went. Um, I urge you. And that, that's all I wanted to say today. Thank you, Brother Randall. Um, so I want you to look at a couple of things, and we'll bring it out later in text. Uh, Brother Randall will soon excuse himself because he has to actually go to that friend he told about. Um, they have a memorial service, so he will be leaving uh, very soon to attend that memorial service in person with his family to submit. But I want you to understand something, a couple of things. First, break the silence. You cannot keep it within you. Reach out for help. Um, you know, this uh, fr a friend of Brother Randall, uh, he was a good person, you know, so as to say, uh, and, but yet there was a point, remember, suicide is a momentary th thought. And, you know, some people at that spur of the moment, they act on it and they end their life. And it is that point, if you and I are at, or we know somebody's sharing their at, just help them to pass from that moment. That's all that's needed. You know, that's why we call, tell them to call 911 or go to the emergency room or, you know, talk to your counselor or whatever. Help them to, or just a friend, be a friend, help them pass from the point of suicide. That person might be great, you know, they have everything in life, but at that point where they're really struggling, just help them to past that point. So that is why I want you to understand that you need to speak up about this topic because you don't, either you or somebody else might end their life. There are lots of myths rather than facts that we believe in. For example, you know, suicide only affects some people who are completely mentally gone. No, <laughs> you know, this person that uh, Brother Randall spoke about was just like you, just like me in a completely normal and yet it was at that spur of the moment that made him to take his life um you know the other thing can be like oh they're just trying to get attention don't ever say that they might be desperately trying to reach out for help and you by rejecting that might actually be pushing them off so just in us for example forty thousand people die by suicide every single year and the number is just skyrocketing because of COVID. You know, 45% of the individuals who died by suicide were seen by their primary care uh, doctors and other people just before their death. So it's important, especially if you're in the uh, healthcare field, that you understand that, you know, you have to do that, those, ask those questions. Don't just presume everything is okay with that person. Um, more people uh, die by other ways of accident than by suicide. 
um, for young age group, that's the second most leading cause of death. So remember, um, you know, you think that if you're young, you're all like, oh, the happy bird and the chirpy bird. And no, that's the time where the, all the hormones are like all over. And the chances of doing that spur of the moment thing is so high. So you have to be very careful. Um, and, uh, and it's the highest rate in the, uh, you know, what do you call it? the crisis, uh, uh, the midlife crisis age, or like after that, when you feel, especially if you feel like you're worthless. And men, look at this, Brother Randall's friend was a man. So men are more prone to end their life, uh, you know, than women. So it's very important we understand some facts about suicide. Um, suicide risk assessment. Uh, I'm going to give you some tools that we use so that, you know, if, even if you have a little bit of knowledge in your head, you will be able to at least use some of these. Um, so remember males, and I remember the age group I told, remember if they're, they don't have any support group, they are more at risk. Um, if they have a mental illness, they're more at risk. If they have a family history, especially if your family, anybody in your family, your friend uh, has ended their life by suicide, please remember those people are more at risk than other people. Somebody going through you know, severe health issues, be it you know, chronic pain, be it like cancer um, or even trauma, Trauma is a big one, uh, be it uh, childhood trauma, be it if you were in the military, whatever it was, and drugs. Drugs don't make you normally, think about it. It, it doesn't make you think right. It removes the inhibition, you know? Um, it uh, doesn't help make you think logically. So it exasperates the emotional, all the uh, hormones in your brain, the dopamine, serotonin, all of that is off. Plus, it's removing the inhibition. Plus, it's making you think illogically. So please remember those people are, are at high risk. Plus, there are also people who are outcast, who are looked down of, away from the society. Uh, all of these people are um, actually at the high risk of suicide. Uh, suicidal desire is different from suicide. You, can, you might want, you might have those thoughts, but they, uh, if somebody is sharing that suicidal thought, just remember, assess if they are really uh, about to do it, commit suicide, on, uh, about to do it by suicide. Remember, even I myself might use some wrong words because just because over 30 years, we have been used to speaking in some way. So it's sometimes you might hear my, uh, me having a slip of tongue as well. Um, but we have suicidal desires when we have psychological pain uh, we you know feel helpless or hopeless we are perceived as a burden by other people when we feel like trapped when we feel like we are alone but these feelings we all go through uh, suicidal desires often tend from depression or depressive thoughts so remember um, if you are going through depression your suicidal uh, thoughts will be much higher. So time to go to your psychiatrist and psychologist or counselor and uh, up your medication if needed. Uh, once you do that, you'll see naturally even those thoughts just coming down. Uh, so remember a lot of it is also a medical issue. This is a good one for you to remember. Um, is path warm? So this is a good uh, mnemonic device for you to remember. Uh, ideation is uh, that means is it threatened or is, uh, is somebody threatening or is it just communication is the person using substance is there, is, is there an up in the substance um, you know is the person feeling like purposeless is there an anxiety that is uh, going on um, is the person uh, feeling trapped hopeless is the person withdrawing in like, you know, giving away, uh, withdrawing from family, saying goodbyes, saying, writing posts, you know, it was really, you know, uh, you know, you were a blessing and, you know, hope to see you in the other side, something like that on the wall posts. Often people will reach out like that. Um, anytime that people want to reach out like that, remember, those are uh, cries for help. Um, people get 
angry uh you know uh, with uh, this thing and then they are being reckless you know acting very risky manner and there is a dramatic change in mood uh, just be aware of uh, those uh this thing you know there is a uh, the environmental um, there the, the, there has to be three main things one is the past uh you know check if what or how about their past you know you know if somebody is talking about uh ending their life did they have a mental illness anxiety any kind of uh mood related or substance disorders is their family is it is was there trauma in the family is there abuse check in all of that um if they if they're saying that i want to die by suicide ask them do you have a plan you know uh, what 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 what's your plan you know how do you want to do it what's your uh, intention of doing this you know uh, what are the options you have do you have a gun at home what do you, uh, do you have a uh, what, what access to uh, lethal weapons do you have what is a weapon the, uh, be it uh, many pills or be it you know guns or be it uh, a hose or be it whatever uh, do you want to climb up the th uh, like you know 23rd floor and uh, try to jump what is your plan ask them so many times they will share it um ask them did you ever in past attempt suicide um did you uh, have a family history uh, where people in your family did that uh, what's your plan for the future so ask those important questions sad person and remember a person who wants to end their life is a sad person and think about sad uh what is their gender what is their like a sexual gender age um you know is is that in that age gap that we spoke about depression or hopeless do you see, sense that in that person it will be you will see if their person is depressed their, their lips will be down uh, like you know bending downwards uh, their body language will be droopy or like the, you have to uh, you can see that sometimes on their face so is that person looking depressed um you know is is there uh, and you can ask some of the questions about depression too you can just google it now we have google uh, to check if the person is depressed or not um in fact you can even search for sad persons and uh, uh you can do a, uh, the google has a, even a, like a a questionnaire for it so you can actually help them ask those questions you know uh, previous attempts excessive alcohol uh, uh, is that person able to think rationally is there a brain uh, disorder uh, going on uh, is there has there been a recent change in relationship divorce or loss of family members it's very important um is there uh, uh, has there been a organized or serious attempt we'll take a look at this is that person not having any social support be it from the family be it from society uh, is that person uh, stating a future intent if so it is very important we understand and be careful and uh, help that person and reach out to that person if you are going through that reach out no, uh, nssi like i said is not suicide it is with the intention to hurt uh, yourself in order to relieve the pain but is that a healthy way of doing that either is that the only way of relieving pain or are we just not thinking uh, enough to find out some healthy coping skills um, you know now almost like sometimes 40% of the people have shown some or the other way where they are trying to hurt themselves and it's important that people who have nssi are also at a higher risk for ending their life by suicide so just remember that um you know is that just check any person who has gone through recent loss uh, of a uh, loss of uh, you know somebody that, from the loved ones from suicide or loss of relationship they are at a higher risk also if the person has a lethal means check that person you know remove those lethal risk uh, means you know if they have a gun tell them that hey i'm going to call your family and they have to remove the gun make uh, you know talk to the family if the person talks about hey, i'm going to go out and i'm going to end my life call 911 for that person you know or tell them okay you're not going anywhere you're going to sit right here and we are going to talk to right Out, out, you know, talk through this situation and just be that support that need they need right at that point. Um, don't take it lightly. Uh, what helps? Um, you know, if you see, 
just building up an overall resilience in that person. If your loved one is going through that, you know, help them to have some uh, positive coping skills that they can utilize and have plans about, okay, if you're feeling depressed, this is what you do. Problem solving skill. We think it is not normal, but no, it's not. You know, sometimes we just feel stuck in the problem. It's time we learn to step back and see, okay, this is the problem. Hence this, what can I do about it? Not be stuck only at the problem. You are, uh, you are created by God. God has give, made you in his image and his likeness. In Bible, the word in Latin is called imago Dei. That means you're not just an evolved person. No, you're not an evolved animal. Evolve, if you were like evolved animal, you don't have any worth. But no, God has put his, you know, his emotions and his ability to think in you. Don't think less of yourself, even if people say about that. Don't believe them. Believe in God who says, you are my child. And so learn to problem solve. Be aware that there is help out there. You're not alone. Remember, and we're going to talk about the uh, what the Bible says in a minute. Um, re- also have positive friends. You know, Don't be stuck to your negative uh, peers. If you have a negative peer, uh, who is influencing you in the in the wrong way get away from them bible says it is you know we need to be away from the negative influences so um have positive relationship people who can build you up not break you down um you know be in a safe environment if you're going to abuse move away you know it is not impossible to move away because you know if you need help reach out to somebody there is help available, but move away, you know, be safe. If somebody is not in a safe situation, help them to move away and get them connected. You know, if you know somebody, get them connected. If you don't know, reach out and get yourself connected with the community resources that are out there. Remember, the main thing in, uh, while you're help dealing with somebody going through uh, suicidal ideation or desire or an intent or wanting to end the life. And if you are doing that too, wait, <laughs> wait on the decision. Wait means watch out. <laughs> Remember, you have to watch out for those changes that we discussed. Ask. Just by you asking will not make them want to end their life. In fact, if you ask, they might be willing to share. Ask. If you're going through, speak out. So ask, if you're going through this, remember, it will pass. Just say, it'll, it'll be okay. It'll be okay just to keep patting yourself. It, 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 it's only, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Just keep telling yourself and talk to others. You know, God has put people in the outside in your life or, you know, just reach out for help. There are people, you know, if you're seeing this uh, video later, reach out to us if there's nobody else. Reach out. Um, So remember the safety method. Identify uh, the protective factors. If there is a protective factor, we're going to talk a little bit more about the protective factor. Um, can uh, you know ask conduct the suicide inquiry? Determine is if that person is a high level. Take them to the hospital. Take them to the doctor. Uh, and then always, if you're in the medical uh, profession, document that. So identifying uh, the uh, signs. So avoid the situation that might present to be the uh, suicidal ideation and behavior. If you're going through that, and if you have access to, you know, ways, avoid it, you know, anticipate that, okay, I might one day feel that way. And in that case, what do I do? Remember, uh, a doctor that is not trained at the moment somebody is having a heart attack. A doctor goes through training, or if you have gone to school, you have learned how to read ABCs before you were given
plan to be a You need those things to like make plans. Uh, if somebody has make plans with them to how you can get rid of those things. Uh, are you able to hear me? Okay. Uh, just uh, okay. Uh, individual uh, coping skills. Remember that uh, we can all have calming strategies. You know, I told you about healthy coping skills. So self positive self talk. You know, listen to some nice music. Go out for a walk. Go out for a run in in a safe neighborhood. You know, um, think about if nothing else, sit and think about those. Uh, you know, one of the most the, the strongest memory of your happiest moment, you know, just hold on to that and just deep breathe, breathe. Just take a count uh, six, take the breathe in and count five and breathe it, breathe it out slow. Or take seven, uh, breathe in, like one, so breathe in and then count until seven and then breathe out slow um, until six or five. So breathe. Do exercise. Exercise is very important. Interpersonal coping skills. Uh, remember, you know, if that look at uh, Brother Randall's friend. He never reached out to somebody he was so close to. That is Brother Randall. Um, reach out. Uh, you know, have those coping skills. And uh, if you are young, identify. If I am going through this tough time, whom can I talk to? Identify that person ahead of time and. Let that person know that, hey, if I'm going through this, I will call you. And, you know, um, always have those things and reach out for medical help. Uh, uh, don't be, don't hesitate to ask someone, are you having thoughts of killing yourself? It's not going to make them kill themselves. Don't feel bad asking that. Um, we must, while we ask that, we understand, we must use pain language. Are you going through a situation where you need, you feel like you need to end your life or are you, are you in so much pain and that it's almost unbearable? Use pain language, you know, be empathetic. Uh, don't sympathize, but empathize. Empathy is where you are stepping into their shoes. Sympathize your, is where you're feeling sorry. Don't feel sorry. They don't need you to feel sorry. They need you to feel their pain. And God, Jesus says, you know, weep with those who weep. Mourn with those who mourn. So be in their shoes and feel their pain and say, you know what? I know that would that might hurt a lot. And, but I am there for you. You know, I, I'll be there to help you in any way you, I, you need me to. Um, so, uh, be calm. Don't panic when somebody tells you, I want to end my life. Like, oh, then that person will feel like, oh my goodness, why did I say that? And they would not share it with other people or would not trust you with their feelings again. So be calm. You do deep breathing and, you know, understand that that's normal. Um, you know, ask those questions. Like I told you, um, you know, once you have you know, remember when you inquire, ask them about the ideation, ask them about the plans, ask them about past behavior, ask them about the intent. Um, you know, are you really wanting to do this? Are you going to do this? Ask them, you know, and then determine what level of risk they are at. Uh, you know, what's their plan? What's their intent? Bring out protective factors. And we're gonna talk about the protective factors. Um, you know, what helps you feel better when you have uh, suicidal thoughts or urges? Ask them, what makes you feel better? What things are people in your life have that has helped you to avoid such actions? If you do this, who is gonna be most hurt? You know, uh, if that person is gonna be, Without, if you're not there, who can't live without you? Who needs you most in this life? Even if it is a plant that needs you, even if it is your dog or your cat, even if it is your child or your husband or your wife, ask them, if you end your life, or think about it, if you end your life, think about the trauma that your family will go through your child, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your sister and your brother might want to do the same thing. You know, are you okay in allowing them to go through that same pain? You know, use the protective factors 
And the main important thing, offering hope. The pain is here, but there is a hope beyond. And this is very important. Remember this song. And it says, God will make a way where there seemed to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. When you are going through that, sing that song. Google that song. And I'll learn it if you don't know it. Sing it. You know, pain was not the pain that you're going through. You know, physical pain and emotional pain is, you know, a result. So the ability to feel is good. Pain started when God was man disobeyed God and chose to obey Satan. So if if you or I listens to Satan and the world instead of listening to God, that results in pain. And remember, Jesus says the enemy came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Look at this verse with me. It's in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. And if you or somebody else you see wants to end their life, that is to kill yourself or whatever, you know, kill, uh, that other person is killing themselves. That's the work of the thief. That's the work of Satan. Don't let Satan w- get victory in your life. You know, but Jesus says, I have come that they may have life. Jesus came to give eternal life and life abundantly. The life you and I are living sometimes in pain is not what God has desired. God's desire is that we have abundance of life. That means life flowing out like we as if like, you know, we it's it's a quality of life that you and I cannot imagine. And one day, if you today believe in Jesus, you will have that quality of life in heaven and even on earth. God will progressively make your life more clearer when we say no to Satan and yes to God. And remember, this is God's promise. He says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, the plans to prosper and not to harm. This is God's promise to you. The plans to give you a hope and future. So Satan wants to take away your future, but God wants to give you a hope and a future where God prospers you. Through that rock, which is, you know, so hard to break, God will break it and give forth that life if you only will receive it in faith. Um, Let me uh, take you to, to the next verse I have for you. Surely he takes up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. So remember, God, the Lord Jesus Christ understands your pain because there's no one on earth who has gone through greater pain than him. He understands you. So don't feel that, you know, there is no hope. There is a hope, a hope because God is there and he understands your pain more than anybody else, more than I, more than uh, your parents, more than your friends, more than anybody else. God understands your pain. Also, um, the next verse is, and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. If you think that's not you, you're wrong. Because if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, remember that pain is for a little bit. But God will restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Your suffering is not forever. There is hope because God is your hope. If you choose to believe in him, remember, um, 
there is no temptation that has seized you that is not common. We think we are the only ones suffering like this, but that's not true because it says no temptation that has seized you that isn't common for people, but God is faithful. He won't allow you to be tempted beyond your abilities. If you are going through a tough time, remember God thinks you are strong and he it is in your ability. Instead, with every temptation, God will supply a way so that you will be able to endure it. Don't run away. God will give you the ability to endure. Um, you, you are meant, you, you know, if people are being abusive to you, you can say, you meant it for good, bad, evil, but God will turn it for good. And it says, you know, uh, if you wait upon the Lord, he shall renew your strength. You shall rise up on wings like eagle. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. So remember, uh, if you hope, that's the main word. It, you have to wait and hope on the Lord and he will change it. So the question is, are you willing to put your trust in Jesus Christ, who took your sins and your suffering and died for you on the cross. And if you would believe he is able to change all of those sufferings, which is for a little bit, and strengthen you and give you courage and give you all the ability to endure it and bring it out and restore you and make you fly like eagle. You might be stuck. You might be trapped. You might be enchained, but God is able to make you fly. So don't give up hope. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. So be tough. You know, um, don't stop walking because of, of the, uh, you don't stop walking because there is potholes on the road, right? Where you stumble. Why do you stop? Why do you want to stop living when there is a load of problem? You know, you learn to walk, you know, I'm from India. So think about some of the villages where the government never built a road in like 10 years. And yet people are walking on them. You know, people have, you know, we are so stuck to our shoes sometimes, we forget to look at the good things that we enjoy, the blessings we enjoy. So learn to count your blessings. A Christian perspective on suicide begins with a formation of faith that is nothing, in, uh, including suicide, separates us from the love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, nothing will separate you from God, but God has a hope. You don't have to end your life because God will make of you a victor because he says what? The Lord Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again from the death like nobody else did. He broke the greatest power and today he's alive and he will make you alive when you believe. He will give his resurrection power so you can break every chain and you will be set free. That's what Jesus said. When the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So don't be trapped, you know, uh, by those uh, thoughts. Set, be set free. So I want to conclude with uh, the, uh, the the what Nami says. Um, you know, always remember that you look at the warning signs. If you suspect, intervene. You know, uh, ma uh, making and changing a like if you see those people, like you know, those warning signs. Somebody's making a changing a will. You know, buying lots of pills, saying that oh, it doesn't matter anymore, and everything will be okay very soon. Those kind of words. They're withdrawing from families, giving away all the jewelry they love. Jewelry. You know, all of those signs. You know, take increasing the drug or alcohol level. You know, saying goodbyes. Intervene. Are you about to end your life? Are you thinking of ending your life? Are, is, is it so difficult right now that you don't want to live anymore? What's your plans? You know, how are you planning to do it? Ask those questions. Stick with that person. Help them pass through that time. Call and make like, you know, call every couple of hours if necessary and say that, and say that, you know, I'm there for you. God loves you. Offer them the hope and God will help you, uh, you know, go through this. Thank you.